Hello there guys and welcome back to Let's Learn Civilization. I'm going to click next turn straight away and get the ball rolling. We are trying to clear out, well we have actually just cleared out the barbarian camp up the top. We've got some more settlers heading up here. I'm going to try and found myself another city. And that's mainly so, oh, what does Alexander want? He wants to continue giving us gold, iron and horses for dyes. Yep, sure, I'm down with that. So... We're going to get another civilization, another city started up here even, which will give us access to um, the dyes, the Barringer Crater. I'm just trying to decide whether it's worth putting it on the, on the uh, coast and having another coastal city. Or whether it's worth leaving it here, this side of the river. Because if I put it here, at least I will have access to that marble. Because if it's there, one, two, three, it's slightly out of reach. Although I would have access to one, two, th put it there. One, two, three, I'd have access to deer. Hmm, difficult one. I think, though, I am going to put it here with my originals. But it's, it might not be the right decision. I mean, it's, it's definitely a decision. It might not be the right decision. Now, it says enemy spotted near Dublin. Oh, it must have been these guys pass kind of passing through. Um, not too much I can do. I'm liking that look. We've <laughs> we found horses on an island and gone and built out there. That's just ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, I don't think they're a problem at the moment. So, let's get this caravan doing something useful. That's one that was running before, so let's get that going back to Athens. Got another unit that needs orders. We've got another caravan. And what? where can we get the most gold from for the least risk? Probably from Corinth, so let us do that. Let's just have a look at where my profits are going. So, of course, Germany does have their own religion now as well. So, spreading my religion to Germany could, you know, quite possibly upset them. But that's fine, you know. We'll uh, we'll see how that one goes. If they want me, they've pretty much got to come through Greece. Although, I don't think that's really going to be much of a bother to them, if I'm perfectly honest. Sistine Chapel. Well, at least I managed to get that built. Steel stolen. An unidentified spy stole the secrets of steel from Edinburgh. Didn't I put a spy in there for counterintelligence? You're not doing a very good job. And we don't even know who it was. Okay. Right. Cardiff. What can we build in Cardiff? Let us go for... A difficult one now. Let us go for the workshop first to increase its production. And then we'll go for the zoo. Um, we're going to go for the zoo here in Dublin. Seems like a decent enough uh, way of doing things. These guys are now fully healed, so I'm going to put them back onto Automated Explore, where they're promptly going to go straight back out and run back into the Barbarians that almost killed them a few turns ago. And we have a, another caravan here. And we're going to trade back with Ty, because we were trading with them before, and they give us the most gold per turn. And off to the next turn we go. Now, what I have to consider now is, apart from the city I'm going to found up to the top, do I have another city and where do I put it? Because any... Is that another city? They really are expanding this way quickly, aren't they? I'll really watch the Greeks. Um, I could potentially have another city down here. Which seems like a bit of a waste building out in the desert. Although a coastal city somewhere like here might be actually really good. Because that would give me access to fish, sheep, marble, incense, wheat and stone. So that that tile there is actually a very, very good tile. Another useful thing you can do as well is if you have a city, a coastal city, that is on a coastal tile that is only one tile wide. So like here. 
if I put a city on, or, or this one as well, because this is the one I wanted to land on. If I put a city on this tile, which side is the coast? Is it this side? Or is it this side? Well, it's actually both. So if you have a boat, a ship, a submarine, you can actually move it from this tile to this tile by going through the city. So even if this, even if this bit of land carried on across here, and made this impassable. By putting in a city with a harbour, because the city is actually on both coasts, you can pass through the city and come out the other side. So it's a brilliant way of making little shortcuts for boats if you put cities on bits of land that are only a single hex wide. So that may well be something that I look at doing. Right, you guys are going to get up to there. Hopefully these uh, Egyptian warriors aren't going to give you too much of a In fact, actually going to put my... Uh, knights on them just to stop. I don't think Egypt would do that. I mean, they'd have to declare war to do it, but you never know what's going to happen. So just get you guys heal up. And we'll go on to the next turn. But I do think that will be a good place down there to have a, another city, but I need to be careful and make sure there's no barbarians down there. There probably is, to be fair. So I'm going to have to send some units out there just to... Uh, Make sure my settlers are going to be safe. And I'll probably buy the settlers. I've got the money to do it. Okay, World Congress has been founded. So, we have now met the Brazilians. And we have Gandhi on the map. And there'll be one more to find. The Zulus. Okay, so now that World Congress has been founded, let me just have a quick look and see who it was that lost their capital. So, Brazil lost their capital to the Zulus. Hmm, fair enough. So we know the Zulus are playing quite an aggressive game. Get to make a proposal. What am I going to propose? Um, now, scholars in residence I don't want to have because that means uh, res uh, to research technology is 20% faster if it's already been discovered by at least one other civilization. Now, as I'm kind of leading the science charts, or at least I should be, I don't really want that to uh, happen at the moment. As you can see, certain things will um, upset certain people. So, like a standing army tax... Unit maintenance costs are raised by 25%. And civilization is angry if we propose this would be the Zulus. That probably because the Zulus have got a massive army. So I'm going to vote to enact that. Probably won't get passed, but we'll see how it goes. So my settlers aren't going to get there in a single turn. But we're going to keep them protected anyway. The unit needs orders. This may upset Germany. But I do get some additional science, so it's worth doing it. Always worth upsetting Germany for science. Embassy from Brazil. Let's wait for this turn to resolve. Obviously, we can now see the other capitals on the map, and it gives us a bit more of an idea of the size of the map. We've got Brazil over here, which is their new capital. If you get your capital taken over, you automatically move to your next largest city. Uh, we've got a little dot down here. There's the um, Zulu capital. So it looks like Zulu and Brazil are actually quite a good distance apart. So I'm not sure how that happened. And then we've got India hiding down there at the bottom. So now we have the... World Congress. And as you can see, it's got a countdown timer on there. So if we click on World Congress, you can see this little number next to each civilization. And that number represents how many votes that you have, how many delegates that you have. Um, you have the host, which initially is the first civilization to found the... Um, World Congress. So whoever is the founder becomes the first host. And you have 
two proposals every time there's a World Congress. One proposal is from the host, and the second proposal is from whichever civilization has the highest population. So in this case, it's myself. Um, if the host has the highest population, then it's whichever civilization has the second highest population. And every 30 turns, you get to propose something. So there'll be two proposals, and then after 30 turns, you get to vote on it. I will have one vote, everybody else will have one vote. The host always has two, so they get an extra vote. And if you have spies in other cities, you can sometimes tell what they're going to vote for. So as you can see, they have two delegates, one from membership and one from being the current host. Now the way to get a diplomatic victory is you can't actually do it until the World Congress gets upgraded to the United Nations. But what happens is every civilization you have that you are allied with, and again, this only counts on um, the United Nations, every city-state that is your ally gives you an extra delegate that you can use to vote in Congress. And you have to have the highest proportion, you have to have the majority, you can vote yourself as world leader, and that's how you win a diplomatic victory. So you can see all the resolutions here can vote for a world leader, um, but that can't be proposed by a civilization. That's done automatically. Um, every other civ every other 30 turns, there is an automatic vote to choose a new host. You can choose to embargo city-states and embargo all the civilizations. You can ban a luxury. You can set up these things like World's Fair, where when they're running, people have to... Well, you don't have to, but you can spend a city's production and convert it into uh, production towards the, the World's Fair, for example. And whoever, as you can see, there's, there's a gold, silver, and bronze trophy. Whoever puts in the most would get the gold trophy, so they get their culture increased by 100% for 20 turns. Whoever put in the second amount would get the silver trophy and would get a free social policy. And whoever was third place would get 500 points towards the next golden age. If you if you get silver, you get the bronze as well. If you get gold, you get silver and bronze. So if there was a World's Fair and I was to put in the most production, I would get the culture increase, I would get the free social policy, and I would get the points towards the next uh, golden age. There's also things like um, world religion, science is funding, stand and, and you know international games international space station which is great international space station wonder appears in the capital production from scientists and oh, one percent production from scientists and plus one science from engineers great scientists provide 33 percent more science when used to discover a new technology so that'd be really really good to get and of course you also get um, a free scientist because you get silver and you get the one-time research boost as well so, yeah, International Space Station is probably something that I will be voting for. And if that comes up, I will put every bit of production I have into it to make sure that I get it. So, just an example of some of the things you get in World Congress. So, that's enough sort of waffling on about that. Let's continue to move these guys over into Hamburg. But at least you can see how the World Congress works. It's all pretty much automatic most of the time. It just comes up and tells you what you need to press and when. So, we will make votes when we need to make votes. So the Egyptians have finally gotten themselves into the Renaissance era. Hopefully we're going to be able to reduce the number of technologies stolen. Now there's one thing that I do find strange with this game that I don't quite understand. And that is that I can have an unknown spy steal from me. Which is weird, because if I haven't met another player, how can that player get a spy in my city? It's completely weird. I can't move a spy into a city of a player that I haven't met, because I wouldn't be able to find them on the map. The only reason that I've now met Brazil, um, the Zulu, and India is because World Con Congress has been founded. And World Congress can only be founded if a player has met all of those civilizations, which in this case was obviously Germany. So they've been doing a bit of exploring. So let's put these settlers down. Again, that's going to give us a bit of unhappiness. Unhappy and we've now got Douglas popped down there, which is the sort of main capital city on the Isle of Man, which is off the west coast of 
um, Great Britain. It actually, it's actually sits between um, England and Ireland. Well, Wales and Ireland, I suppose. It's just slightly northwest of Wales, if you're wondering where the Isle of Man is. I think it's northwest of Wales. Anyway, it's there somewhere, floating around in the sea. I'm sure my friend Jez will be very upset with my uh, lack of geographical knowledge of the Isle of Man. So, what are we going to build there? We are going to pop a granary down. See, we could also have a water mill and an aqueduct because it's it's on it's on a river as well, which is why I wanted to put it on one of those four tiles anyway, so it would be next to a river. So let's get the granary down. We'll also get three gold and three science per turn for having the Banja Crater within our borders, which is specifically why I wanted to put a city up there. Might as well move these guys into the city for a bit of protection. They can heal up while they're in there. We'll get three health per turn because they are in a city. On to the next turn. Happiness is now down to four. Getting dangerously low. Need to sort that out. Unit needs orders. Thought I told you to go to Hamburg. Right, they can't get in there, so it probably means they've got, like, guys here. They've got stuff blocking my way. Could be military units, could be workers. Probably workers. Oh no, there's uh, lots and lots of military units. It looks like Germany has quite an army. Should I be worried? I'm a little worried, I'll be honest. I'm a little worried, but not completely worried. Right, okay, so we're going to head round that way. Because they've got a lot of stuff trying to block it. What's his current mood? Um, oh no, he still doesn't seem too bothered about the, the whole um, religious conversion thing. Okay. Well, if he's not bothered about it, I'm not bothered about it. Washington has completed Himeji Castle, so I'm not too bothered about. Yeah, I'm quite glad that I, I kind of let Chicago stay now because it gives me somewhere to trade with. And going to war, unless you're specifically aiming for a domination victory, going to war is often not a good thing to do um, because you usually just end up running into all kinds of trouble. So we've got a great scientist. Germany has stolen steel. We'll let it slide the first time. And you actually get a bonus with other civilizations. If you... If another civilization does... Because... Let me just backtrack on myself. This thing here that actually tells you the good points and the bad points. Why they're friends and why they're unfriendly. This is only a very vague calculation. There's a lot more behind the scenes mathematics that goes on to work out whether they're going to be friends or guarded with you or whatever. This just gives you a rough idea. So you might commit the same transgression against them multiple times, but it will only show once on this list. If another civilization wrongs you, such as they steal technology from you, if you instantly jump down their throat, which you've got every right to because they're stealing from you, then... It doesn't look too good. I mean, it looks worse on them because they're the ones stealing from you. But if another civilization steals from you and you turn around and go, that's fine, I forgive you, I'll let you off just this once. And then they steal from you again. If you then turn aggressive the second time, the other civilizations are more likely to be on your side because you've given that other civilization a warning and they've still done something against you. So... Sometimes you really do have to sort of play the civilizations off against one another. We're now going to build a bank. Shall we build a bank? What do we go for? Ooh, I think I might actually go for the Globe Theatre in Dublin if I can get it built in time because then we will get a free writer which means we can write a political treaty and get a massive boost to culture. We've also got a great scientist. So what do I do with... Oh, we've got Charles Darwin. So what do I do here with Darwin? Do do we go and build another academy? Or do we use a one-time science boost? I think I'm going to use the science boost. The wind. So that gets us navigation straight away. We get to pick another one. Now, gunpowder will instantly be down to one turn. We could have archaeology. And we could build the Louvre quite quickly as well. Though it's not really of a lot of use. So let's get the gunpowder. That will be done in one turn. And on with the next.
Just waiting for stuff to happen. We now have gunpowder, which means we can build musket men, which is brilliant. So that's literally two things off the research tree, almost done straight away. So what could we have? We could have economics, which would allow us to produce a windmill. Camp gold yield improved by one. Customs house gold yield improved by one. Um, polled gold yield improved by two. And yeah, trading post gold. So economics basically just gives us a massive boost to all of our gold, which is useful because we can use gold to quickly purchase buildings. Metallurgy would give us lancers, which would be useful because we can use uh, lancers to destroy horses quite quickly. And also we could build the red fort. And the red fort means that cities are, uh, defenses are 25% more effective. I think given the fact there's a few hostile civilizations on the map, I'm going to go for the metallurgy first, try and get the red fort built, and then go for economics. It's probably the safest way of doing things, to be honest. Um... These guys are going to stay up here for now because there is a very real possibility that barbarians could still spawn in some of the dark areas. In fact, I'm going to move them over here to stop that from happening. And we are going to spread religion with the great prophets. 70 uh, science from that because there's such a big population city. And then we're going to head over to Munich. We'll have to do that on the next turn. Actually, no, we're going to head down to Cologne. Es wäre in eurem Interesse, dass ihr dieses Angebot ah. sorgfältig prüft. Germany wants to be friends. Sure. Fine. I'm going to I'm going to fr become friends with Germany and possibly attack America. I now feel like I'm playing Japan. Um, or possibly Italy, although Italy never really attacked the Americans, but still. Okay, we've got a city connection established between uh, Nantes, so we're going to backtrack on these guys. Move them down to Cologne, because we can do it in a single turn, because there's a handy road there. And because that has a Cologne has a bigger population than Munich, so I will get more science for doing that. 60 science. I'd have only got about 50 if I'd have done it at the other one. So that's fine. Truro, what were we going to build here? I think we said we were going to do the harbour. So that would connect up to our capital via uh, water, which doesn't matter anyway because, of course, you know, it's already connected via a road. Um, but it's well worth having it because uh, if we get any trade routes from there, we get an addition. There again. You see, this is what I was saying. I get to, It costs me two gold per turn to to build this, to maintain it. It will give me a connection to the capital over water, which I don't need because it's already connected via a road. Sea trade routes originating from this city have a 50% increase in range and produce produce an additional two gold when connecting to another civilization. Well, do I have any trade routes emanating from Truro? So we can have a look at the trade route overview. And as you can see here, I've got three trade routes from Dublin, three trade routes from Edinburgh. So it's no point me having that. I wouldn't get any benefit from it at all. So what I might do, everyone's recommending stoneworks now. It'll give me additional happiness and production from marble and stone. Let's go for that then. Cardiff, I think we are going to go for... I think we'll go for the zoo. We'll try and bump the happiness up while we're not really at war. Those guys are now going to stay on alert. But I think what I'm going to do is exactly what I said I was going to do. I'm going to purchase Have we got another unit in the city? Ah, oh, of course. Hang on. It's because these guys are in the city. So let's just move these pikemen out of the flipping way. So I'm going to purchase some knights and I'm going to purchase Settler. And then I'm going to move these guys down. And we're going to try and secure this bit of land here. Unit needs orders. Pikeman, you guys just stay there. On to the next turn. 
He wants to open borders. Hmm. I'm going to refuse. Refusing to open borders doesn't normally count negatively against you. My own, The only thing that I sometimes dislike doing... Um, yeah, as you can see, he's now got the arse because I proposed standing army tax. That's fine, I don't care. That's, I only did it because you've got a massive army and that's the only reason you're crying about it. So, I'm glad that we've got a fair few uh, extra workers now because they are actually uh, running around and doing a lot of stuff. There's still quite a few tiles that could be converted actually. While we've got a lot of money in the bank, I'm going to purchase another worker up here. And I am going to purchase a, another worker up here. I've got the gold, I might as well use it. And then we'll get those guys automated and uh, hopefully we can get a few more of these tiles uh, converted. We're still having stuff stole from Edinburgh. I've got um, a spy in Edinburgh. He's not doing a very, very good job at all. Um, what we're going to do right away, while we still have some money in the bank, is we are going to purchase a constabulary, which will reduce that steel rate by 25%. Unit needs orders. Well, I'm not moving the settler first. Let's move the knight. We are going to have to head through um, Ty's territory. which should be fine. They shouldn't mind too much about that. We'll move the settlers up behind them because we know it's, it's safe through here. There's no barbarians there to worry about. We really don't want to end a turn with the knights in their territory because it will upset them slightly. Not so much the settlers. It has been many years since your promise to not expand your borders near America. You may consider that promise fulfilled. Well, I couldn't expand my borders near them anyway because I'd already expanded as far as I could. So, on the happiness front, America, India, Egypt, all quite high. The Greeks, the Zulus, the Germans, not quite so happy. I'm sort of stuck there in the middle with Brazil. Uh, Nantes wants incense. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult because once we get this city here, we'll have incense. So, uh, Douglas has adopted a religion and it's adopted the correct one, which is brilliant. Let's have a quick look at Washington. Is well, he happy? No, he's still neutral. Uh, they covet lands that I currently own. Oh, well. Have I got anything I can trade with oh. you? Dies? Agreed. Now, what I did there is I didn't ask for anything in return because I'm trying to build up a bit of friendship. So, just letting him have something. Because if I'd have, if I'd have asked him to give me something in return, he just would have refused. So, it would be absolutely no point whatsoever. Um, we're going to build the shrine because the shrine will give us faith and food. We're going to set our new workers onto automated. Now, I can't actually do it now because I have um, already moved that worker. But some of the things that you can actually do with workers. Have we got any more that haven't moved this term? So, whenever you select a worker, you will see the little symbol appear here telling me rec recommends I construct a farm. Obviously, because that one's close by. You can turn those on and off, by the way, by going into the map options and you can um, hide recommendations and then that they will no longer appear. If you see that little farm that's appearing on top of the workers, hiding recommendations turns that on and off. Um, also, it's worth noting, you can also put trade routes on here as well. So you see these little blue lines showing you where your trade routes actually go and connect, which can be a handy thing. Let's you know if you're heading through enemy territory or through barbarian camps and stuff like that. But let's turn that off for the time being. So that is the recommended construction. These are all the things I can build. Now, I can tell them to manually construct a road on that hex. But one other option you have is this route 2 mode. And the way route 2 works is if I'm on this tile here and I click route 2 and click this tile here, they will build a road from this tile to that tile. So that's a little useful thing if you want to manually set up a road. Not something you need to do very often, but it's it's nice to know about it all the same. Let's go on to the next turn. We found another barbarian encampment. That might be down here 
Yep, yeah, thought it might be. Well, they're in quite a position, aren't they, there? Uh, Zulus have founded a religion. Fair enough. It's Barbarian's turn. Right, we've built the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which means we get a great person of our choice in the capital. First thing I'm going to do is attack these guys. Won't be able to kill them on the first turn, but on the next turn we should have them. So we may select a free great person and we can have whatever we want. We're going to have a great scientist. Okay. We're going to choose production in Edinburgh and we are going to see if we can make the Taj Mahal because it will give us happiness. Uh, Andrei Kolmogorov. Kolmogorov? It's not a name I'm familiar with. Sounds very Russian. I could be wrong. And we're going to go straight into Discover Technology. We're just going to pump th the uh, science points out. Then we are going to go in to... Let's go into economics and get the money coming in. We might as well. It will help our secondary objective of a diplomatic victory. It'll also mean we get more money per turn coming in so we can potentially buy military units if we need to stave off an attack. And we can also rush buildings if we need to do that as well. Um, an unidentified spy stole the secrets of astronomy from Edinburgh. I've only just had astronomy. How did that happen? Fine. Let's move on to the next turn. I wish I knew who it was that was stealing from me. Really, really not happy about this. So one of the very good things about playing for a religious victory... A uh, religious victory? No such thing as a religious victory. One of the great things about playing for a scientific victory is that if you're always ahead on the technology tree, you will usually be the first person that can build wonders. And that's great because having wonders will give you a higher score. It also gives you many benefits and it means that you can start building them before anybody else can as well. So... Right, social policy. One production for every city and plus five production in, in cities when construction, constructing buildings. Well, that'd certainly be a useful thing to have. Or each city you found will in, uh, increase the culture cost of policies 33% less than normal and starts a golden age. Well, I don't intend to found any more cities apart from that one that's going to be at the bottom. So let's go on to Republic for a start. And then on the next turn... I mean, that incre increases the um, training of settlers, and I get a free settler. Might go for that at some point, but uh, what we'll probably start doing is um, trying to get a bit of happiness back into the... Uh, or we could just go commerce, actually, get a lot of gold. What we want to do, and I think what I actually will do, the next time we can adopt social policy, we'll start on the rationalism tree. The rationalism tree will just produce great amounts of science for us and it will also mean that we can use our faith to buy uh, great scientists as well um, not too sure what I can buy with my faith at the moment profits and missionaries um, yep yeah, so that's fine we can leave that as it is Truro will now build the zoo just to gain extra happiness there are a few things you can get through social policies. The, the other game that I was playing in parallel with this, I think in in the space of two turns, I went from like minus 25 to plus 50 on the happiness um, just by enacting the correct social policies. So we're going to keep moving these guys down. Don't want to move them any further because, mind you, they can't attack directly. You can't shoot a non-military unit. They could move on to the same space and capture them, but I think we're all right. So... The knights will wipe these guys out quite easily. So that's the camp gone. We're not going to move them back. We're going to sit them there and heal. We'll attack these guys on the next turn. And at least having a city down here will help us try and sort of stop the barbarians from reappearing. I mean, not completely, but it will help. So I think what I'm going to do is I will just play through to the end of the next turn and then probably call the video there. Because we're not going to uh, get these settlers down to there anytime soon. Gandhi wants embassy. I'm fine with that. Not a problem at all. 20 turns left until the first vote in Congress. Embassy for the Zulus. Why not? At least it gives us the option to trade with them. So, city-states taking their turn. Then the barbarians. They're going to attack my horses, which is a bit of a pain because, obviously, 
it's a ranged attack, which means I don't do anything back. But they do get a promotion, so they're going to instantly heal, because that will increase the damage they do. It'll be a minor victory, but it'll be a victory nonetheless. So, we could chip away at them. I'm going to keep moving the settlers forwards. That's just a trireme. It's not uh, brutes in a boat, so at least they're not going to to come onto the land and steal them. We should be able to get there in one piece. I think we'll be alright, actually. Um, going to get those to heal up. I thought I'd already told them to do that. And that's pretty much the end of that turn. Not a great deal else I can do there. Let's have a quick look and see how Douglas is doing. So it hasn't quite started to expand his, its borders yet. It is starting to grow. Um, but it seems to have stalled at the moment. As you can see, there's no growth. Obviously, there's a shortage of food on these tiles because Tundra doesn't provide any food. Uh, everything here just produces uh, production. We do get three food from the city itself, but obviously that's not enough for it to grow. We could potentially uh, sort of try and build some upgrades on these tiles, or we could buy this tile out here. What we could do actually, straight away, is buy a tile and click here. So at least now this is producing um, food. Of some description. We, we can make a workboat from Truro and we could move that around the outside edge. What I am going to do, um, if I can afford it actually, is produce a workboat and the reason I'm going to do that is we can get these pearls which will be good because we'll ha if we work this tile here, additional food, construction and gold and we get pearls which are a luxury resource. So that's going to be well worth doing. So I think that's all we can really do this time around. Thank you guys once again for watching. I hope you're still enjoying it. And as I say on every video, if you do have any questions, if there's anything you want to know about the game, anything you'd like me to try and explain, I'll do my best. Either send me a message or leave it in the comments below. And I'll either try and answer it or I'll cover it in a future video if it's appropriate. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.